नमस्ते जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ द राइट स्टैंड आई मानन नरसिमन कमिंग टू यू लाइव फ्रॉम द सी एन एन न्यूज एटीन एंड फेडरल बैंक प्राइम टाइम स्टूडियो लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन पॉलिटिक्स हैज कंटिन्यूड अन अबेटेड ओवर बजट ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एवर सिंस फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर श्रीमती निर्मला सीतारामन प्रेजेंटेड इट ऑन ट्यूजडे द अपोजिशन कंटिन्यूज टू मेंटेन दैट द बजट वॉज बायस्ड एंड ओनली एलाय स्टेट्स स्पेशली बिहार एंड आंध्र प्रदेश were prioritized and largely benefited the government in its counter has rebutted the allegations point by point the opposition led by malikarjun kharge on uh, wednesday in the rajya sabha alleged that the budget is nothing but a kursi bachao budget and it was biased to which the finance minister fiercely countered saying that it was not possible to name every state in the budget malikarjun kharge further alleged that the budget was for andhra and bihar fm countered the allegations and said that there were other states which had not been ignored the fm said that the cabinet in june had taken a decision to set up a port on vadhavan in maharashtra india block leader vijay vadetiwar has alleged that maharashtra was insulted fm said more than 76000 crore rupees had been allocated for the port in maharashtra itself congress mp rahul gandhi alleged that federal structure was violated in the budget finance minister in a counter mentioned maharashtra and said that the name wasn't mentioned in the vote on account budget in february nor was it taken on wednesday parliamentary affairs minister kiran rijiju also hit back on thursday at the opposition and said that the opposition had insulted parliament the opposition insulted the mandate of the people and abusive politics was being played by the opposition on the floor of the house much to the fact that even the prime minister has been outrightly disrespected in parliament so the government maintains that it it's a budget that includes that is inclusive that includes the betterment of every state but like every budget there are focus areas and in this case clearly there have been ally compulsions but bihar and andhra pradesh have long demanded attention which has been given in this budget let's now shift focus ladies and gentlemen away from the budget to another aspect and there has been huge drama in karnataka ever since the congress government came to power in the state they have been tainted by one scam after the other Political drama escalated in the state as the BJP continues to demand Chief Minister Siddaramaiah's resignation. The Congress is already on the back foot over the Valmiki scam that pertains to the alleged illegal transfer of 187 crore worth of funds from the Maharishi Valmiki ST Corporation. The alleged case came to light after an official died by suicide and alleged multi-crore corruption in the corporation. The concerned minister B Nagendra quit post backlash and the former minister was remanded to judicial custody for 14 days on the 22nd of this month. The Congress is now reeling under yet another scam, the Muda scam. The Mysuru Urban Development Authority, that is Muda, the scam. Under the scheme, 50-50 scheme, land owners are promised 50% of the developed site per acre that they give up to the uh, to the authority, development authority, that is Muda. Chief Minister Siddaramaiah's name cropped up after a complaint was filed against the chief minister and nine others including his wife as a beneficiary the complainant accused the chief minister's wife of wrongdoing a charge that was outrightly rejected by the chief minister himself the bjp has demanded a discussion on the on the scam on the floor of the house and this demand earlier was rejected by the congress government but uh, Some time back there was talk that perhaps there could be a conversation but this has now been rejected the BJP JDS delegation met governor Thavarchand Gehlot in Bengaluru and complained to him about the alleged Muda scam earlier this evening the BJP called for a rally from Bengaluru to Mysuru over the Muda scam and that's planned for Friday the congress will hold a counter rally from Mysuru to Bengaluru highlighting the scams during the BJP's tenure now reeling under two mega scams can this congress government really come clean or is this really going to tie up the siddaramaiah led sarkar in a bind mohan vishwa spokesperson of the karnataka bjp with us sanket yanagi advocate with us and anand ranganathan doctor author political commentator with us namaste jai hind to everybody thank you very very much for your time mohan vishwa what's the big charge by the bjp is it true or untrue that some of these land allocations happened during the time of mr yedurappa as chief minister the congress believes and mr siddaramaiah says there is no wrong doing the anand since 14 months the inception of congress government in the state if you see every day in the newspaper and the news channels you can hear only two words one is scam one is price hike only these two are happening in karnataka muda is continuation of the other scams you know done by state 
Mm. See, if you see this, what is happening is, if Sidramaya is done correctly, why he is hesitating to discuss the same inside the assembly? Why is running out of it? And today, they have cut short the assembly session today itself, where it was supposed to end tomorrow. Why is he getting fear of discussing the same inside assembly? Instead of discussing over there, he is coming out and he is making a press conference and he is showing allegations against our government. And who is stopping him from investigating all those scams? If, if all there are scams, okay, and the government is in force from past 14 months. Why is he keeping quiet? Why is he not doing any investigation? And he is telling some records, some scam of 2011. He was the chief minister between 2013 and 2018. What was he doing? Was he sleeping or what? Who is stopping him from investigating all the scams? If at all, if there is a scam, let him investigate anything. We are not at all denying mm. that. But here, in the case of Muda, it's a clear-cut case of scam where Mr. Sidramaya, who calls himself as a socialistic CM, has been awarded and he has a compensation of 62 crore openly in front of media just 15 days back when you asked about this scam. Mm. At the same time, these sites belong to Dalits. During 1991 itself, there was a notification to acquire those lands. In 97, the Muda acquired the land. Even after acquiring the land, there is there, is, there was a denotification. After that, these lands was purchased from, again, those SEST community people. And there is a condition if you purchase from those people, an alternative land also to be given. That condition also not met. Even after doing all these scams, the area in which the land has been acquired, the market price hmm. is minimum 4x lesser than the place in which the site has been allocated to his wife. That's hmm. a bigger scam. If you if you if you if you are aware so, of Bangalore, yeah. it's something like acquiring a land in Pridhi and giving a site in somewhere in Siddhashiv Nagar. You know the difference between the rates, right? Correct. It's a clear cut scam. Yeah, that so is that is, is not allowed in Muda. You are not supposed to be reallocating exactly. land which is nearly 4x. That's one allegation. The other thing is that aside of the chief minister himself, there are so many irregularities that the total scam is alleged anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 3, crores. 3,000 crores. As per the as per reports and as per the complainant himself, the original complainant. Sankh Ketyanagi, what's your response? Truthful or otherwise, there are some allegations made. It requires an investigation. No doubt about it. Now the government has set up the criminal law in motion. Set the criminal law in motion in the sense the commission of inquiry has been already constituted and ordered. It is another problem. When there is already an investigation, it may not be appropriate to have a parallel investigation by some other agency which would override the investigation which is already being taken place. It's a matter of prudence, a matter of common sense, matter of law as well. It is not a case where the allegations are made and allegations go unanswered or uninvestigated. It is not a case where allegations have not been taken serious no probe has been ordered. Hmm. Government is pushing it under the carpet. Hmm. But it is a case wherein there are serious allegations, whether it is truthful or otherwise, I reiterate that uh, which hmm. requires a probe because the public fund is involved, public property is involved. All these matters of public importance require a clean chit to run the government, be it a Congress or a BJP. Hmm. And this needs an order and retail probe. It is not a case of the BJP is that uh, the probe is not being properly conducted or probe is not to be done by the Commission of Inquiry. When they accept the Commission of Inquiry being, uh, so having uh, the, mm. taken the charge to probe, they cannot parallelly say that it must be investigated as per their whims and fancies too. Mm. And they are not finding fault with the mode the Commission of Inquiry is proceeding with an investigation. Mm. So that being the technical and legal point, and they are making it out of uh, the issue where there is no issue, in, in fact, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, let them better find out the lacuna in the investigation and say, look, the Commission of Inquiry has committed a blunder, committed an error, which has not been properly conducted or lawfully, as is required, not been probed. Then uh, they can seek for investigation by the competent agency. If the government is not agreeing to the request, they have another remedy to approach the court. They are not remedyless, but the way the, the BJP is intervening in the session or obstructing the session to discuss about the other important aspects of the matter is just a waste of public time and money in the session mm. to deal with other important aspects. 
BJP has to even responsibly behave as a responsible opposition and also allow the government to function as a responsible government. Hmm. So at, at the end of the day, the people's money, people's interest is getting affected. <laughs> We're not discussing other important aspects in this session. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting how Mr. Yeniki said it with such a straight face, but all of us here will agree that what the Congress is expecting the BJP to do in Karnataka, the BJP is expecting the India Alliance to do at the center. Yes, Mr. Raghunathan. Uh, no, uh, e e even the Congress spokesperson was gently smiling and laughing at his own statement. No, I have a couple of points to make. Hmm. Anand, first of all, let me castigate you for making a mountain out of a molehill. Hmm. Karnataka, there are no scams in Karnataka. It is a land of milk and honey. Hmm. How dare you allege something wrong is happening in Karnataka? This is the place where it elicits no outrage. When the sitting deputy chief minister says there will be no money for development because we've run out of it. We are paying everything for those schemes that we had promised. This is a state where there is no outrage when they criticize the center for hiking fuel prices and they hike so much of fuel prices themselves. And they give a reason as well that they have had to hike it. This is a state where nationally it elicits no outrage when 1100 farmers commit suicide because burdened by terrible debt and drought and the sitting minister in Karnataka says they are committing suicides because we have increased the compensation. Can you believe, can you even think of such an evil thing to say? But where is the outrage? There isn't. So please don't spread false narratives. Karnataka is the land of milk and honey and there is nothing wrong in it. Now let me come to this point which uh, my good friend the Congress spokesperson has made. With due respect to him, and to all Indians, that includes me. I'm not a Congress spokesperson, by the way. The Congress supporter. Let's the Congress see. supporter. My apologies. My, my, my apologies. My apologies. Yes. Um, look, uh, as far as conflict of interest is concerned, uh, Anand, I have to say, we Indians, we understand conflict. We understand interest. But we don't understand when these two words are separated by a preposition. Conflict of interest, I don't know. When the Congress supporter says that there is no scam, there is nothing wrong in there. Let me explain the conflict of interest out here. You are a sitting chief minister. Your government promulgates a scheme whereby whatever land you own, if the state takes over that land, somewhere else you will get parcels of land. The sitting chief minister's wife, Miss, uh, I forget Parvati her name. Ji. Miss, Parvati ji. Parvati ji. Parvati ji. Yes. The state takes over three acres of her land in some uh, village in Mysore and gives her 14 parcels of land in upmarket areas. Is there no conflict of interest? I am aghast. In fact, the petitioners are the people to whom that original three acres belong to. The BJP has got nothing to do with this. This is a common man against the government trying to expose the conflict of interest. So, sir, please. Think twice before you say that there is no conflict of interest out here. Sanket Yanagi? Let, let me give an illustration of similar situation when the BJP is ruling in other states. No, 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 no. BJP is wrong. Let One BJP minute, be... please. I am not intervening. Please allow me to I complete this sentence. I accept BJP is wrong. I accept BJP is corrupt. Please don't do what about me. Explain the conflict. I of cannot. I you. cannot speak okay. as per your whims and fancies. Please, please don't intervene. So let me give illustrations where there was a serious allegation of misuse of the public fund in so far as Rafael is concerned. Was it investigated? Did the yes. prime minister resign? Supreme Was it Court. probed by? Please understand. Supreme Court said it will not intervene. That's it. No clean yeah, sheet has been given. Please do not misrepresent. Allow me to complete the sentence. The Supreme Court gave a clean sheet. Come on. What are you talking? So okay, let, let, let him make his point. Let him make his point. Let him make Supreme his point. Court, please look into the judgment of the Supreme Court. I am a lawyer. I am responsibly making this statement. Supreme Court did not say that it is not a matter to be investigated. It only said it is a parliamentary accountability committee requires to investigate it. Supreme Court refused to investigate in that matter. Please understand, please read the judgment. Don't misconfuse. Don't confuse, okay. don't misconfuse. Let him later make his argument. And insofar as other points are concerned, was it allowed to be investigated by the Parliamentary Accounts Committee? No. Was it allowed to be investigated by the CBI? No. It was opposed by the government saying that it is a matter of national 
interest, national sensitive issue, issue hmm. national security issue, whatever the case may be, it goes unaccounted, it goes uninvestigated, and the prime minister did not resign, the defense minister did not resign, nobody sought for the resignation of any responsible no, person. Speak. But the point is, when Anand, the man deviate from the main topic, Anand, okay. these are all no, no, discussed. No, no, I don't, one minute. Let him. He's coming back no, to the point. Yeah. No, no. Let so keeping that aside for a moment, I'm not saying that these are not the matters which do not require investigation. I do say, when the the matter is pertaining to a public interest or the public front or the public property, definitely it requires an investigation and responsibly. The opposition is taking up this issue, and I appreciate the opposition for taking up this issue because it's a matter of public interest. But having taken that issue, hmm. was it necessary for the opposition to curtail or obstruct an investigation by the investigating agency that's commission of inquiry? It may not be appropriate, and they must allow. So, as I pointed out, hmm. since they do not have any objection for the commission of inquiry taking up the investigation or probe dealing with the matter, they, there is no point for them to jump the gun. Hmm. So, in Anand, my opinion, well, there, there, no, there is no point for them to jump the gun is what? Mohan Vishwa and then Dr. Anand. Ranganathan. Yeah, Please. exactly. Anand, see, let me come to technical. Okay, I am also a qualified professional. Okay? So, hmm. what he said, let me tell you, if at all, if there are some scam, if the investigation agencies, either SIT or CID or CBI or ED, then the matter will be investigated, charge sheet will be filed, it will go to the court, court will decide. But here, in this case, what has happened is, in the case of Muna, just a day before the start of Vidhan Sabha session, Mr. Sidramaya, okay, he forms a committee under the retired Judiciary Commission. Why did he was keeping quiet for 15, 20 days? Why he formed a committee just a day before the start of the session? Okay. After that also, if the retired judge gives a report, where does the report come? It comes to the assembly again. It is at the will of the government to accept or reject that report. Who is there in the government? Same Sidramaya, same Congress. You tell me, is it fair when the allegation itself is on the sitting chief minister to do this? Yeah. This is what we are questioning. It is not at all involved. Let him allow for the discussion. We don't want to waste the public money. Let him give. Let them give at least a day's time to allow discuss the same matter in the uh, Vidhan Sabha. Why is not allowing it? He is curtailing the discussion. In fact, tomorrow the session was supposed to end. He ended today. Why is this fear about instead of discussing inside Vidhan Sabha? Why is he coming out? And he is making press conference and making some stupid allegations. That is what we are asking. We are did he, asking did he, did he, did he curtail else. the assembly curtail the assembly session because he didn't want to discuss that or he didn't want the BJP MLA sleeping one more night inside the assembly? The sleeping inside the assembly <laughs> seems to be a, a practice measure. Every session of the assembly, we see some party or the other deciding to sleep inside the assembly. I'm just saying it on a lighter note, but yes, the opposition has every right to ask. But Dr. Ranganathan, how can you blame the chief minister, sir? You just call, you just you just admonished me for asking questions about what is happening in Karnataka. It is the chief minister and his wife who have been alleged who have been allegedly who have benefited from the sale of the land. The chief minister is saying, I will only set up a committee under a retired judge who will investigate that, and then they will submit the report to me, which then I will decide whether I want to accept it or not. He is perfectly within his rights to do that. Of course, in the land of milk and honey. You not only ignore the conflict of interest, you heap more and more conflict of interest upon it. You will be the judge, jury and executioner. But, but can I please, with due respect to the rather erudite Congress supporter, many look, what about the Supreme Court? Supreme Court on the Rafal judgment, court, we are thus of the view that the review petitions are without any merit and are accordingly dismissed and court. On point after point, the Supreme Court delivered slap after slap that the center did not use false documents, that the question regarding the price was a mere suspicion, that the petitions saw themselves as an appellate authority, that the court did not see a fit case for registration of even FIR under Section 156.3. Sir, you might be a lawyer, but you need to refresh your memory. Sanket Yanagi. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. First of all, the matter before the Supreme Court was to direct the CBI to register the FIR against the Prime Minister and other ministers in charge of the Rafael deal. 
Supreme Court said it's a matter of public interest, national security. It will not be even discussed because of the national security issues. Correct. See, it will not investigate. And these are the matters to be discussed in a parliament. But there is a committee called Parliamentary Accountability Committee. PSC. Accounts Committee. But, but, will investigate it. But, but later, Sankeji, Sankeji. Please, please allow me to complete. Yeah, okay. Supreme Court has not said no offense has taken place. Supreme Court has not said there is no Sankeji. offense which required an investigation. Supreme Court having come to the conclusion that these are certain issues which have to be discussed within a specified arena. Correct. In a but Sankeji, Sankeji your, even if I were to accept your point, although there are there are counters to that, one sir, the Rafal deal was a government to government deal. There was no individual land holding, individual profiteering and Prime Minister Narendra Modi or any of his family did not own a single Rafale aircraft nor did they sell the Rafale aircraft and get, get F-16s or, a, uh, 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 or F-25s. That didn't yes. happen. That, that didn't happen. Please, but for you to... No, no, one minute, sir. Respectfully, for you to equate the Rafale deal with the Muda deal, <laughs> land deal, Sir, that's a little too much of, uh, you know, uh, I don't even know the legal parlance for it, but I won't even call it, it doesn't even fall within the realm of a metaphorical, uh, uh, you know, example. Sir, here in this case, person A and the person A's spouse have land that has been acquired by an authority and they have got land far into the center of Mysuru at 4x the rate, which is not supposed, which is again brazen violation of the rule. And that person A and B have benefited out of it along with so many others because there have been abnormalities and irregularities. And this person A is now going to investigate the charge against him and uh, person B. And you are saying this is equivalent to the Rafal case. Sankeji, yeah, I, please, I, I still do and I will credit you to, with far more intelligence than this argument. But I am sorry, with okay. respect sir, I will not buy this. You cannot equate the Rafal deal with what Muda is doing. And here... Uh, Dr. Angarathan, Dr. Angarathan okay. and, yes. and Sankeji, I'll come back to you. I have to wind up because, uh, yeah. 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 I, I think the, the insinuation of Sankeji was that if the Congress is corrupt, then the BJP is also corrupt. Let me help in that. He, he might have chosen the wrong analogy. But I agree with him. The BJP is corrupt. I say, Danke ki chot pen. I'll give you an example. Hmm. The High Court convicted the BJP for violating FCRA Act in taking illegal donations from a foreign company. Hmm. Yes, BJP was convicted. If such a thing had happened, what did the opposition do? The BJP overnight amended the FCRA Act, just thus rendering the High Court conviction toothless. If Congress, that was in the opposition, it would have turned out on the streets, demanded resignation of the Prime Minister, because this was a clear cut case of corruption. But why didn't Congress do anything like that? Because the Congress was also convicted of the same violation. Because the Congress helped the BJP in amending the FCRA Act, going back to the emergency. So, sir, Sanketji, you are absolutely right. If the BJP is corrupt, the Congress is also corrupt. No, Your problem is, not, is not you just say that. only sir, BJP is corrupt, sir, Congress for a is not budget, corrupt. For a budget which was benefiting those states which needed funds, the, Cong the opposition has disrupted parliament. Yes. And here, here it is, it is, it is a case of Ask graft. That. It is a case of profiteering. And they are saying that the BJP and should not disrupt Anand, the Anand, BJP you, should not disrupt the assembly. Uh, to the Anand, uh, no, 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 one, more, one more thing that is going to happen. I have to wind up with. I have run out of time. One more thing that's going to happen. One party is marching from Bengaluru to Mysuru. The other one is marching from Mysuru to Bengaluru. Hey, 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 hey. What's going no, to let be? Them what is going to be what is going to be tested is the quality of the roads and also 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 the food at the eateries on the way that's what's happening this this whole politics is nothing but a mockery open and k you if there is graft there is graft if there is profiteering there is profiteering i don't know which way karnataka politics is going and what the voter will do uh, seriously it's it, it's it's now become it, it's taken more than one month that flyover is not opened why no, no VIP from the state or from the center. Wow, fantastic. Clearly land of milk and honey, Dr. Raghunathan. Have to wind up on that note. We'll take this forward on Friday. Thank you very, very much, gentlemen. Thank you.